they built the Athens Theater to help create um, or to make DeLand a central hub here in Florida. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware, but DeLand is actually the first town in the state of Florida to get electricity. And so keeping along that same train, they wanted to gather people and have them all come here because, well, back in the day, back in the 1920s, there wasn't television. At that point, movies were just coming out. Uh, and one of the biggest forms of entertainment beyond the traveling circuses was vaudeville theater. When Henry DeLand created the town of DeLand, originally it was actually Persimmon Hollow, he wanted this area to be known as the Athens of Florida. He wanted it to be a cultural hub. And so by the time they actually created the theater, they tipped their Stetson hat to Henry DeLand and they called the theater the Athens. The Great Depression, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better time for escapism. I mean, if you look at, at all the, uh, even the songs from that era, I mean, people desperately needed to get out of their head and uh, just to have that, that moment of escapism, that, that moment of magic, just to uh, leave your troubles at the door and get lost. The nice thing is the Athens charged very little admission. I think it was nine cents to get in to see you could stay all day. The audience that the Athens Theater brought in was pretty broad uh, from all ages, young and old, rich and poor, just because there were so few options to really have any entertainment during that period. In the 1950s, my father, Joe Fleischel, uh, underwent a major reconstruction of the theater from the inside out. He started with an exterior facade that they put on a big uh, glass marquee and covered over the original 1920s facade. They added air conditioning they changed the seat uh, arrangements, so it went from about 900 seats, believe it or not, in here to about 550 seating capacity. In the 60s and 70s, now, I, the more that television took over, the less prominent the theater became in the community. From what I've heard from the locals, the Athens was fondly nicknamed the armpit from the 70s, it was beginning to show its wear and tear. The place was really falling into disrepair. There was even a last ditch effort by uh, two gentlemen uh, who tried to turn this into a dinner theater. And even then, it didn't have much draw. It kind of basically went downhill. I think there's a lot of financial issues. I remember seeing bats and rats. <laughs> so it was a pretty scary place at the time. Uh, there was smoking in the theater, it was pizza, kind of a pizza and beer joint. So I think uh, also there just really wasn't a good niche for entertainment. Uh, downtown DeLand went through a malaise period, a lot of stores had closed. There just wasn't a great opportunity for traction down to the theater. It was being tossed here and there. Uh, it, it was going to be remodeled and it wasn't and it was going to be sold and then it wasn't and somebody was going to do something to somebody else or it wasn't and it just went back and forth like that for, for quite a oh up until uh, there was a decision made to really redo it. It did close in the early 90s and it went into disrepair. They ended up taking off the 50s facade and what was left over was a very decrepit looking place that everybody um, thought was haunted. In 1993, Main Street DeLand Association saw the need to open the theater again and they formed a subcommittee to try to explore the opportunities. So what ensued was a $12 million 12-year restoration project. It took a long, long time and a lot of money. And when we were ready to move in, do you know what year that was? 2008. And 2008 and 2009 were not the years in which to do something like we were trying to do. So that it, financially, it was, was really uh, very difficult to get it going. Certain things had to be the way that they were when the theater originally opened in 1922. And one of those things was actually the ceiling. So initially when they 
redid the theater, the top of the, the ceiling in here was actually supposed to be open because the cross beams were going to be used um, as ways to be able to put different lights there for the productions. And the um, historical echo grant board said, absolutely not. It's not how it looked when it originally opened and you have to put a ceiling up there. And so the theater ended up having to use almost all of their cash reserves that they had put aside to be able to get the place up and actually running once all of the restoration was complete. There were a lot of pundits and people that uh, didn't think it would ever come to fruition. There were a lot of folks that uh, badmouthed the project, thought it was a waste of government dollars, but we prevailed in the long run. To have the Athens uh, come back, come back to life, uh, was, it was integral to the community of DeLand. The first challenge was convincing people that, hey, we're open. It's been 20 years uh, since we've been closed, restoring and renovating. And uh, we had a generation that was used to seeing this place being closed down. So uh, finally, uh, getting the word out was great. Uh, and I'd say probably by our second year, people began to realize, oh, it is open. In the eight years that I have worked here from the theater, our patronage has increased more than six times um, it, it, for each annual year. So that is a wonderful thing. Oh, the things you can think. Oh, the things you can think if you're willing to try. Oh, the things you can think when you think about this. Since reopening, we do a number of different in-house productions every year. So we have done everything from South Pacific and Les Mis. Currently we're doing 9 to 5 the musical. Most of the big musicals, if you were to name them, I could either say, yep, we've probably done that or we're going to be doing it soon. So like next season, we're going to finally get to do Chicago and, uh, and Mamma Mia. So there's always something new. And then in between all those shows, we always have a ton of different concerts um, and, and different events. It's been really nice seeing the overflow effect, you know, the, the ripple effect where people come in here to the theater to see a show, but then it also does the town good as well, uh, which was the initial idea for the theater to begin with. I think the Athens Theater has such an historical connection to the community because, for example, in 1941, on the December the 7th, there was a matinee that afternoon and my father got up on the stage, stopped the show, and said, we're at war, we've been bombed by Japan. So, you know, going back to all the way those years, all the different things that have occurred, and just all the memories. Um, I can remember having my first date here in the Athens, and right over there is where I had my first kiss in seventh grade. I can't tell you how many families uh, have so much history, shared history, and neighbors, and the community. One of my favorite memories is seeing our facility manager, Alan, play the role of the father in Christmas Story the Musical. Uh, that show is absolutely wonderful. If you get a chance to see it, it is just pure fun at Christmas time. And there was nothing like um, bringing my, at that time, two-year-old daughter who came in and said, oh, that's Mr. Allen, and oh, look, and look here. And it was just seeing the magic, not only through her eyes, but through the entire audience. There's a wonderful sense of family, and you couldn't ask for a better place to have that family than in a town that is so unique and so charming. And, um, we all watch out for each other, so it's a win-win situation for everybody involved.